and for the first time in, I don't remember how it's long. It's been a while. Financial Phil is in the house. It has been a while. I've, I've been in this studio, though. I'm telling you, I've been here. Yeah. At least, I, even though I didn't know how to get into it, I've been here. <laughs> you have been here, man. <laughs> Financial Phil, usually you hear that voice over the telephone, 638 each morning. Uh, for a two-minute business report and on Mondays for a longer form uh, format. And when he can't make it, John Everson comes out of the bullpen and uh, also fills in, too. So, John, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. I do my best to fill in for Phil. <laughs> Sometimes that's hard, though. You do a great job. Oh, I try. You're a thorough man. Oh, I'm experienced. That's what it is. That's what it, that's is. What it is. That's right. And both of you guys also experienced volleyball coaches. Yeah. Just your statement. <laughs> yeah. Phil says yes. Somehow. We all have, this, uh, have the same interest in the office, I guess. Yeah, man. Uh, John uh, and uh, Phil are uh, part of the Myriad Group of Financial Advisors of uh, Ameriprise Financial, located on Winchester Avenue. And John, uh, once again, you've been recognized as one of the finest advisors in the state. So, yeah, the uh, what's interesting about it is we have been recognized again for 2023 as um, both at the local level, so as an individual advisor, as a Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisor. Um, and I got to make sure I say this on the front end that when I'm recognized as a Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisor, that's not a John Everson distinction. That's a Martinsburg location distinction because I'm not much without folks like Phil McCoy, Tyler Butler, Erica Bowers, Lisa Everson, who work very hard to help take care of our clientele uh, here locally. But that actually is the fourth year in a row that we've been recognized as a Forbes Best in State. Uh, for 2023, there are 14 advisors across the entire state of West Virginia that are included on the Forbes list. We are one of those 14. How do you get to be considered and how do you get the uh, notification and the award? Yeah, it's actually, it's uh, the process is um, incredibly thorough. Uh, so Forbes, uh, does has uh, shook research does the, uh, the 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 evaluation uh, on behalf of Forbes, and so the first thing that is required there are certain metrics that have to be achieved in order to even be considered by your firm uh, to be nominated for consideration. So, for example, you have to have uh, at least a seven years industry experience, at least with your current firm for a year or more, unless you were acquired uh, by, you know, uh, another firm or something, things like that. So, and then there's, there's other uh, criteria. There's actually a, uh, an asset management criteria as well. Now, they really don't disclose how, that, how high that threshold is. So translation, uh, if you're newer in the industry, you know, uh, the likelihood you're gonna be on the list is uh, pretty remote, simply because they're, you know, the criteria is set up and designed for folks that have been around for, uh, for quite a period of time. And so from the, the nomination process, then uh, you receive a, uh, it's as innocuous as an email that shows up one day that says your firm has nominated you. Would you like to go through and complete the application for consideration? So the first time that I was nominated four years ago, I thought, yeah, let's take a look at this. Well, the process is way more thorough than what I had perceived that it was going to be. It took several days to complete the application. So it is exceptionally thorough. Their, their screening process is, uh, is challenging. What was interesting then, once you submit your application, uh, they acknowledge one of two things probably will happen. We're either going to make an office visit, and that visit may be unannounced, or we will uh, uh, arrange for an interview, either a webinar, a Teams or a Zoom uh, session, or a phone call. Uh, because you know, and they do uh, they go, do go through very thoroughly and uh, screen. So the the interview process takes anywhere from about 90 minutes to two hours uh, answering their questions, and their questions are uh, very thorough. I do have to admit. Wow, two, I'm impressed. Two days to get through the entire application it's, process. It's the application is. Uh, I can I can understand why so few people get selected for consideration because the application is a without question a screening mechanism in and of itself just you know because it it's uh, it's daunting it is daunting Billy yeah why so much John for screening and 
What does it cover? Uh, only financial or community involvement or what else? Excellent question. What they're looking for are individuals that ultimately are engaged in their community. And so it does involve everything from, you know, the numbers, you know, how many clientele do you work with and what's the breakdown of, you know, kind of a product mix in terms of how those client relationships are uh, represented to they do not measure performance. Because if you think about it, there's no independent way to evaluate uh, that. And, and you think about it, for the, uh, the five of us sitting around the table here, you know, we all have different goals and objectives. Some of us are still in the accumulation phases of life. Uh, some of us may be in the, uh, where we're beginning to draw down assets. Well, how do you measure performance when, you know, the situations are entirely different? So they go through and they look at a lot of, of numbers. They also do, do then go through and they look at things like, uh, what is your involvement in the community? Uh, what kinds of things do you do? Uh, they, they ask about the diversification of your team members. You know, how diverse are you? So again, I got to stress, you know, we've received the, the recognition both at the individual level, individual advisor, and then for the Mirius team as a whole, which, and we'll talk about that one then in a second. Yeah, let's go about talking about it right now. What okay. Is, what is the Mirius group? Yeah, so, so the Mirius group is, uh, and let's back all the way up for a second. I'll give you the definition, first of all, of Mirius. Okay, so Mirius is derived from the Greek word Mirios, meaning innumerable, uh, countless, infinite, boundless, which we believe is reflective of the way in which we strive to serve our clientele. Now, there are going to be times where we recognize we may not be the most appropriate or best answer for someone's situation. And while that might be the case, we at least want to try to refer them, uh, point them in the direction that's going to be appropriate for their situation. Okay? And so we try to be uh, as all-encompassing as we can. The Marius Group itself is actually uh, three private wealth advisors, three franchise owners with Ameriprise. So myself here in Martinsburg, Andy Huggins down in Harrisonburg, Virginia, and Stuart Barnes down in Roanoke, Virginia. So several years ago, we reached the conclusion that let's uh, team up and build a team operation. So it's those franchise advisors in those three locations, and then we have operations in practices that we, uh, we own and operate in Richmond, Virginia, and in Winchester, Virginia. So it's basically, uh, the Marius Group is actually a total of 25 individuals, 16 advisors, a lot of quality staff that helps uh, make sure that those 16 advisors stay on track. John Gilstrap. You mentioned that among the criteria of, um, among the me metrics, asset management criteria, does that mean the the amount of dollars under management is, is part of it? That's exactly what it does mean. And in fact, what, what I will acknowledge is that uh, the Marys Group as a whole, we are now approaching, we are just a few dollars shy of the $1 billion mark of client assets that we do manage. So we've reached a pretty good strength and size scale, if you will. Uh, and, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, whether it's an individual consideration that Forbes is looking for or the team level, they obviously have different metrics that they, they apply in terms of the asset volume that you do have to have influence over. You know, people think about dealing with financial planners. Phil, I've talked to you about this on, on the radio a few times. The, you think about folks with a lot of money, or with, with a fair amount of money that are investing. What percentage of your clientele are the, the families who are able to give you you know, a few thousand dollars a year as opposed to it, tens of thousands. Uh, it, it, that's a small percentage because for that for that client, we can't really help them that much. And we'll try, like John had just said before, we'll try to direct them in a way uh, to get them kind of off and running, and then they typically come back. We we do have a handful of children of clients that uh, that are just getting started, but they fall under a household group. And that helps us keep their fees in check. It's difficult to, because uh, we have a minimum fee essentially that we have to apply to each client. So to take someone with a thousand dollars, that's going to be kind of difficult unless we can get them in the household with someone else that says, hey, you can kind of ride mom, dad, grandfather, grandmother coattails, and we can get you started that way until you're until you're off and running. So it's a small percentage, you know, uh, below a hundred thousand, I'd say. 10 percent ish it's probably about in, right in that neighborhood uh but of the everyone up and above that level the majority of them had come to us before that and we would 
free of charge, kind of point them in the right direction. Here, here's what we see and give them the advice that we're allowed to give them without having that fiduciary responsibility. And then eventually they come back. And, and that's where a large portion of our clients have come from. It, it is interesting the number of boomerangs that we've uh, dealt with over the years. Um, sometimes, this is, uh, I hate to acknowledge this because you know, being the older guy in the, the building and so forth, had a guy in the office back, this has been a number of years ago, he came in one day and we ran through the meeting and I complimented this guy on his design, how much he'd accumulated, what he had done. Uh, he was kind of the ideal client for us. And I'm complimenting him, and he started to chuckle. He said, you don't remember, do you? And I said, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not following you. He said, John, I met with you a number of years ago. You're the one who told me to do what I've built and put together. But he said, at the time, your services were overkill for what my situation was. Have have I gotten to a point where you can help me? And and the answer was, well, absolutely. And so, you know, it is interesting. You know, the hard part in, you know, sometimes when you talk to a lot of people, you know, you uh, there are there are folks where we're just not the right answer for them. And again, our whole deal is we're going to point you in the direction that's going to be appropriate for you. Because what we do know is situations do change, and over time, we would like the opportunity perhaps to work with that that individual. You know, treat them right, and uh, you know, it's the old uh, what goes around comes around theory. So, what are the criteria you would use? Um, take your take your company out just because it. The, the nature of the question. Somebody's got, you know, the young family, they got twenty five, thirty thousand dollars they they want to invest and they want to shop for a financial advisor. What should they look for? Uh, well, first they should look for someone that's got at least one CFP in the office. You you would want a certified financial planner in the building, at least one. We have two. Uh, we'll probably before too long have three. So that's the first thing. Because our focus, what we're trying to focus on, it's not so much you know, I come on here every day in the mornings and on, on Mondays and we talk about investment returns and that kind of that draws everyone's attention and that's what they're, what they're interested in. That's kind of the easy part. The markets are going to do what they're going to do. And, and there's nothing that we can do to, to stop that or really enhance it other than asset allocation. But the financial planning part, and I'll, I'll circle back a little bit when you're talking about our clients, uh, we do have a handful of clients that we have no money for. We have no assets for them. We're just their financial planners and that revolves around estate issues where we're saying hey look the the titling of this should be this or another way or refer them out to an attorney Uh, tax issues now we're not CPAs for sure we're not CPAs we defer those to local CPAs like Ken Apple Bonnie Ignatius and other people but we can as far as your investable assets are, are concerned we are experts in that nature and how they're taxed and how they may be taxed in the future and how can you position them in a way to be more tax efficient. Um, children issues, you know, you, maybe you have a child that you'll be forever be financially responsible for, forever. So that takes additional planning. You know, things doesn't, they don't change for you like they would for everyone else in a normal situation. But, or if you're a, uh, uh, you work in, 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 in uh, law enforcement and you have a 457, well, that's a, that's a 457 is a great thing to have, but you don't necessarily want to roll that out for multiple reasons at the age of retirement for a lot of them at age 50. You don't necessarily want to take that 457 and roll that to an IRA just for distribution reasons. So in those cases, we're their financial planners and we have none of their money and we're giving them advice and they're paying for us for, for that advice only. But to your question, you know, the, the criteria is, you know, looking for, growth you know if someone comes to us there's two different people if they have 25 or 30 thousand and say hey i've got some money to invest and they're 68 and they're in spend down mode well we're just going to we're just going to enhance that spend down we're not really going to be able to help you much um you know maybe we could give them some ideas and and arrange for what you should be spending that doesn't always work but what you should be spending on the flip side, you're 25, you're 23, and you've accumulated 25 or 30 thousand dollars through working part-time jobs through college. And you have a high propensity for savings. Yeah, we could probably help that person. We we could certainly help that person. But anybody, anybody that you know, we could we could give some sort of advice to, or direction if we're not the ones. We could at least give them directions. Like you know what, we're not the ones, as John would say, we're not the ones that really could help you, but. We have a stable of people that we know that we can refer you to and that we trust. Otherwise, we wouldn't refer them there. Phil, what's the difference between what you do at the Marius Group of Financial Advisors versus what a stockbroker does? 
Uh, there's a huge difference. Stock brokers just buying and selling, and they're looking for uh, that hot buy low, sell high type of stock, and that's not what we do. We're planning for the long term, and I say this sometimes because it is hypocritical. I, you know, everybody knows financial field because of coming on the radio station, talking about market movements in the short term, and honestly, we don't really care about the short term. You know, the long term is what our clients are there for. So we're focused on standard deviation of a certain portfolio over a certain amount of time. And can they achieve their goals with this type of return? Does it change their lifestyle if, if, the, if the market does, like we saw last year, if it drops? Are they positioned in, in a manner where it may be uncomfortable, but their spending habits doesn't have to change? They don't have to change what they're purchasing at the grocery store or change their goals. That's where our focus is, is not really what, on what's going on on a daily basis, but what's going on on the long term? A stockbroker is concerned about what's going on in a, in a daily basis, and and how much can I turn or change? I don't care about your tax situation. I don't care about your children. I don't care about what bills you have. Yeah, I'm going to give you a stock that I think is going to do well today or tomorrow or in a, in a week. So yeah. your fees are tied to your port the portfolio value as opposed to transactions. Yes. Yes. Okay. In in 99.9 percent of the cases, there are there are a handful where they're transactional, but in those transactionals that we are purchasing something, say for an 18 year old that yeah. says, hey, I got fi- I've got $5,000 and they're the son or daughter of a client, then we'll place them inside of an exchange traded fund or something of the like and let it stay. Okay. We don't really want those transactional fees. Are your fees uh, the same for a, a building portfolio, let's say an immature or modest uh, portfolio, as opposed to mature portfolio? Uh, fees are based off of assets under management. Okay. So there's two types of fees that you can that can be associated. One's the asset under management, or AUM as we would say for short, and that's based off of how much money are we managing. So if you have, and it starts at 1.75 and it goes down, so the more money you have, the lower that percentage is. Now, now, at the end of the day, we could, and I think this is accurate, if we looked at our portfolios and who is paying an asset under man, we give the same amount of work to a $100,000 client than we do a $5 million client. It really is. As far as the asset under management, it, it really is much the same work. It's the financial planning that surrounds that. So that's where the majority of our work on a daily basis is the financial planning aspect. And that, that goes so deep. That is... How should I pay for this car? How should I pay for my house? When should I turn on my social security? Should I have a a permanent life or term life? What about funding education for my child? What's the best way for me to do that? And there's all these underliers underneath of that that lead you to that answer. It's not the same for everyone. Okay. So, I, yeah. I, I, thank you. I. Uh, but if there is a particular transaction, will you do that? Are you licensed on this? Uh, yes. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. You can Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. There's there's nothing from yeah. stock options yeah. and and calls and puts and all the fun stuff that we don't have the ability to do. We can do any and everything under the sun. Yeah, it we're fully to licensed to execute any transaction yeah. that someone would need done, but our focus really is primarily is more on the strategic approach of where is this client in relationship to where they're going over time? How are they going to get there? And I want to go back to Rob's question, you know, sort of sometimes those distinguishing characteristics. One of the things that I actually had a client one time when he came in, he's a client of ours today, when he came in uh, in the first meeting, he was, he was very upfront. He said, I want you to, to understand on the front end, you're one of three people that I plan to interview. I said, that's fine. Mm-hmm. By the time we got done, I had given him, here are a few questions that you may want to ask of other people. One of the questions was, are you going to want to see my income tax return on an annual basis? One of the folks that he interviewed, he told me this later when he circled back around, boomerang back to become our client. One of, uh, you know, a local advisor, the question was, why would I want to see your income tax return? Well, wait a minute, time out. If you've got money to work with, the Internal Revenue Service is very interested in your money. And you better understand as an advisor what that client's tax situation is, because that's probably going to influence and impact the things that are going to be appropriate for that individual situation. And so, you know, that's something we pretty much have an expectation on an annual basis. We want to see that return because oftentimes, as I like to refer to it, you know, our fingerprints are on some of those transactions, some of those numbers that are going to show up on that return. Oftentimes, clients may not understand how one translates to the other. We do know that. 
and that's why we work very closely with a lot of accountants and tax advisors to make sure that you know that everything's been properly accounted for you'd be it is amazing the number of times that we will spot things on a 1040 that we will tell the client you need to go back to uh, your preparer to have this checked because we're not so sure that it accurately reflects what took place. It's a whole lot better for the client to do that than to get one of those IRS love letters in the mail. John Everson and Phil McCoy with us here from Ameriprise Financial and the Myriad's Group of Financial Advisors, recently selected by Forbes magazine as one of the top 15, I think you said it was, John, in the state of West Virginia? Uh, 14 in the state of West Virginia at the individual, or excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, nine at the, uh, 14 at the individual level. Uh, we are one of uh, six firms at the, uh, uh, at the team level in the state of West Virginia. And, again. So, and in fact, and I will acknowledge, this is the first year that Forbes has ever done uh, a team ranking. So the fact that the Mears Group made it on for that first time is uh, we think that's where we, we belong. Uh, Phil, what's your tattoo, by the way, on the, on the right side that's of your arm? Speak. That's Shepherd football. It's, uh, that's, there's a story behind that. I'm not a tattoo kind of guy, <laughs> but I did, make, I did make a promise to my roommate that if he did it, I would do it. And to my shocking surprise, he did it. So I had to go through with what I said. Who was your roommate? Uh, Ron Branch, he actually oh, works yeah. at the board office now, yeah. but uh, he said he would do it, and I thought, no way in a million years would he do that, <laughs> and hey, the hey, next hey, day he did it. Hey, Rob, because of that tattoo, that's one of the reasons why Phil's so good with us, because he will follow I through. I did what I said I would do. <laughs> yeah. That cost me 70 bucks that I did not want to spend in college. I, said I didn't have much more than that, but uh -huh. he did it, so I said I would do it. I followed through with it. Channeling my mother, if your friends jumped off a cliff, <laughs> did you follow them? <laughs> well, if I say yes. I will, I guess I will. Yeah. Can you show us the tattoo? I yeah, it's just, it's a little, it's it's just a, uh, it's a little misshaped football okay. now. It looks like a Frisbee now. I was much oh. bigger when that was, when that was applied. So 30 years ago, however long ago it was. That's excellent. Uh, John, Phil, why uh, would somebody go to you as opposed to just uh, making it a safe play by an S&P 500 index uh, fund and just keep throwing money into an S&P 500 fund the rest of their lives. Well, and and like we said before, it's not just the investments. It's everything surrounding the investments underneath of it. Are you even positioned asset-wise to meet your wants, wishes, needs, and goals? And if you're just saying, hey, I'm just going to go with an S&P 500 and be done with it, well, what happens when the S&P 500 drops over 22% like did last year? Uh, what's your reaction to that? Do you, do you Does it change your retirement date? Because if it does, you weren't positioned the right way. Does it uh, does it extend out, or I have to get a part uh, another part time job, or or my spouse has to go back to work, or my child can't go to college now? If it changes those things, you weren't positioned the right way. And uh, quite honestly, most of the time when we meet with people, they they don't understand or they don't know that they weren't positioned the right yeah. way. Yeah, and Rob, a lot of times it's the things that people don't know that really surprises them that we will ask about. And we will spot opportunity that they may not have even have seen or been aware of. A couple of questions on our Facebook page. One was, what's the minimum amount to be able to talk to one of you folks in regards to financial planning? Uh, there is really no minimum amount. It just depends on the each situation. Like we said before, we have some that has no money, zero accounts with us. And they are clients that we meet with them at least on an annual basis and talk to them throughout the year uh, to help. But it's it's based on someone's personal situation and the main component is can we be of value to you mm -hmm. can we be of value and there's people out there we can't be of value to we just can't and, but, and we'll uh, tell you we that can. honestly if we yeah, can't yeah and Absolutely. We'll, we'll point you to a direction that can be of ne value. next question i would assume you're getting less clients now that employers are offering roth i presume he means roth 401ks are they mostly serving those with brokerage accounts? Uh, wrong assumption. They, the, that, that now that uh, most employers are offering uh, Roth IRAs, that doesn't mean that you still don't need someone on the outside. Actually, it enhances that because all of the mistakes that you can make on your own inside of there, we're big components of Roth, and if you've listened to us, you know that. But when you get inside of that and you start moving money, especially taxable money or that's going to increase my, my taxes or decrease my taxes. There's a huge amount of mistakes that can be made in that aspect. How many clients do you have, if I may ask? I'm thinking well, about that's, uh, yeah. I'm thinking about if someone comes to you, how much individual attention that they they can get. If you have a huge number of clients, 
you will be getting less attention. We have a we have a lot of clients, and it, it's based off of I would say clients individual. Now this is household or it would be around four. four yeah, we're 50. between probably four fifty five hundred yep. uh, okay. actual clients here in, in the Martinsburg area. And and as we need additional staffing, we'll 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 do that. We'll go find advisors uh, to add. Uh, Phil's a, a classic example. He used to be with another firm. And, you know, he joined us, uh, what's it been, about uh, 12 years ago? Yep, close now? to it. And it's been uh, a great working relationship. Yeah. But the, the, uh, if we couldn't handle uh, giving them the, the attention that they need and deserve, we wouldn't take them. Sure. Yeah. Gentlemen, thanks so much for coming in today. <laughs> Thank uh, you guys for having absolutely. us. John and, uh, and, and Lisa Everson have been valued uh, <clears throat> excuse me, clients on this radio station, sponsors for such a long time. And uh, Phil, with, with your morning reports, uh, I very much enjoy our relationship with you folks. Likewise. And I hope it uh, works out the same way from your end. Yes, absolutely. it does. Absolutely. So thank you both. And congratulations. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank, you. thank, you, so thank you. That's marvelous. How do people get in touch with you folks at the Marius Group? You can reach us at 304-263-4343 or stop by and see us with an appointment at 1270 Winchester Avenue right here in March. There you go, Phil. You can catch Phil's reports every morning at 638 Mondays for the long form at 835.